All right, this video is about particle systems in geometry nodes. I wanna show you a ton of different ways that we can first set them up, uh, get them shaped to really cool stuff, animating in really, really cool ways. A lot of it is really not that complicated. You don't need to be an expert or super proficient in geometry nodes to do some of these things. So I'm gonna show you how to get them to be shaped in ways that you want them for your ideas. I'm going to show you different ways to animate them and control the movements so it doesn't really feel like you're kind of at the mercy of textures and things like that. And I want to show you how to get them to look good, like changing different object variations, scales, textures, lighting. I'm going to be showing five different animations throughout this video as references to what I'm talking about. If you want all of the tutorials for all five of those, those are available on my Patreon right now under the Particles collection, so you can check out all of those and this animation in particular is completely free for non-members as well. So if you wanna check that out and watch the rest of them, that is available, linked in the description, and you can also get a uh, discount if you subscribe annually. So with that being said, let's learn how to make cool particle systems. Okay, let's start with like the super basic stuff just, just right now, and then we'll very quickly get into some cool stuff. So first, just open up two windows. We're gonna throw in any piece of geometry, and then I'm gonna switch this to the GeoNode editor, I'm going to click new. So there's two ways to get particles available in your scene. It's you can either distribute them on something or in something. So I'll use that idea with an icosphere. So scale it up, subdivide it. You could first do a distribute points on faces and it's going to randomly place points all over any geometry you put in geometry notes that be letters, logos, any, any geometry. You can put it on it like it's a shell. Or again, taking any piece of geometry, you can convert it into a volume and you can do a distribute points in volume. And that's of course going to put the objects within the volume of whatever you put it in. So if you're doing logos and you want to turn the logo into particles, this is how you do it. Now, when it comes to getting the very first steps of any particle system idea, you do have to figure out what is the initial shape we have to go with to go in that direction. So for this example, this animation kind of looks like a wreath. So the first thing I decided was let's get a cylinder and uh, distribute points on that cylinder. And that will get us uh, at the beginning of that. Then I was able to later uh, displace those particles and get that more interesting look. But I started with an initial uh, cylinder shape and distributed points on it. Now, with these animations that I did, there was two ways that I influenced the initial shape. So you can place particles in or on some predetermined shape like a circle, a flat plane, even text, logos, different things like that. You can use that initial shape and you can predetermine that right there. Or you can use images and textures to delete particles that will influence how they will show up and create some type of initial shape. So that's typically one of the first things you're going to want to be thinking about when trying to make something cool. So in terms of using textures and images to delete things, both of these animations are doing the exact same thing, using images to delete points that we can then later animate or do something with. So for example, I got a cube and I just stretched it to be basically the type of shape that I'm wanting my particle system to be before I start deleting points. And then again, distributed those points within that space. Once you have some kind of image picked out, you'll get a delete geometry, get an image texture and open up that image. Then you're gonna need some vector math and some position information so that you can actually move this thing around by adjusting the X and the Y of the text and then moving them around with your add. And that is how you can get text to actually be deleting and showing up. And then you can go after that coloring and animating the points, but that is how we can actually delete points using images, using textures, all of that. And again, I did the exact same thing with an image of a fingerprint. So you can use any solid black and white image to influence particles. One other random way that I was able to influence the shape of the particles in this particular animation was I just wanted, no matter what the animation was, I wanted to contain what you were seeing within a sphere. So it was simple. I just was able to get a proximity system to say once particles go out a certain distance, 
to scale them out. And after that, it made this really, really cool animation. So once you have some kind of initial shape that you've decided for your particle system, now we can actually get into animating them, moving them around with textures and different things like that to make them look and move in a really cool way. So let's do that. I wanna start out with, in my opinion, the, the coolest way that I've recently found to animate particles. So we just have a couple nodes putting small particles in a system. Now for context, the way I've been animating particles for a really long time was getting the color into an offset and then just getting a really small scale. And then you can just play with the W and now we can actually move around and animate particles just like this. You can also get vector math to say how strong do we want this effect to be, but this is how I've been doing it from day one, animating particles and geometry nodes. But now we have this new thing called a repeat zone. And I've been seeing this technique float around on the internet. Uh, Mantisa did a really cool live stream on it. And there's a lot of cool things we can do with this. So, so if you put the set position within a repeat and then do that same thing that we just did, I'm gonna go ahead, bring my scale to be something very, very small. And once we start to repeat this, you get this very, interesting, almost splashy looking texture that if we go ahead and play with the 4D, you get something really, really awesome. And it is greatly affected by uh, the scale of your, you know, the vector scale that we do. And of course, by the scale of the texture, and we get something amazing. If I bring down the scale of my points and I just bring up the density of these this animation, it just starts to look absolutely incredible. We can bring up the scale a little bit. If we bring down the scale a little bit, gets it a little bit more uh, water-like. Playing with the W, playing with the scale, there's a ton of things that you can do with this, and it just looks really, really cool. So just repeating a noise texture, get some pretty insane particle uh, textures. Now, another thing we can do is if we, if we have a noise texture at a really low scale, just something like this, it's kind of globby for whatever reason, this is the animation and the shape you want this to be. You can add a little bit of detail by mixing another noise texture with a mixed color. And then you can take one noise texture, scale it up pretty significantly, bring it back to the original shape. And if you just bring that factor in, it's just going to give it a little bit more of a interesting, higher detailed shape. Rather than this, you can actually bring up the detail to something like that. And you have a little bit more variation and also another opportunity to animate two different components of the noise texture of the particle system. And it gives you a lot of control and a way to just make something even more interesting, getting all the individual particles to look like they're moving and the larger uh, scene as well. One more problem you might run into with animating particles is you're animating these particles at a really low scale. Right here it's 0 0.09 and all the, all the particles are just kind of moving together like a like a really close together school of fish. See how that looks? And we can just bring up that scale a little bit. You get the idea that all the particles don't look like they have a mind of their own. They're all moving kind of with the same mind essentially. And I'm calling the mind the W. They're all moving from the same W value. I want them to have their own mind. What could I do? Well, I can bring up the scale, right? Maybe something pretty big so that it doesn't look like they're all dealing with the same texture. Um, then this W value gets very, very sensitive. I mean, you can look. But at a smaller value like 0.3, the, the W is, a, is far more controlled. You can animate it better. But again, all the points just look like they're moving together. How can we fix that? So before the set position, you can get a store named attribute, a random value node, and we'll just plug that value into value and just call it R. Now we can get a named attribute node, call that, and then plug attribute right into the W. Because again, the problem is they're all animating from the same W value. Now we're going to randomize the W value per point. Now we'll get a math node and set it to multiply add. This add right here is the W value. It's just now we have access to it through the add end. And the multiplier is just going to strengthen that effect per point. And now all of the objects are still animating from a very small 
noise texture scale, but they all are doing their own thing. And again, this add is the W. So if you know how to loop the W, just do it right here. And then now you have a collection of points that are at a low scale value, but all have a mind of their own. This was one of my favorite animations I did, and it really has this incredible nebula look. So the way I was able to set that up was again, using that cylinder, like I mentioned, getting a bunch of particles and then displacing them using that repeat zone trick. But instead of animating the particles with the W value, I just created that vector math kind of mapping setup, and then I actually rotated the texture. So as that texture is slowly rotating, those particles are technically not moving from a set position standpoint. They're just being affected by the fact that that texture is moving and they're kind of moving like it's water. This really cool nebula look. So instead of animating the W, maybe try rotating the texture of the noise and seeing how those particles react. So you can animate the W, you can also animate the rotation as another way to get some really cool motion. All right, as a beginner, I think lighting particles is incredibly frustrating. I'm typically finding myself in two different uh, kind of lighting environments. This kind of low light, very high contrast environment or a much brighter environment that's a little bit more delicate when it comes to how we're placing lights. Now, in either of these two environments, the biggest thing that is going to affect how professional or how good it's going to look is just having more particles, especially if the particles are small. I found myself bringing my density up to a point where it almost felt like it was a solid object and at that point, that's when the lighting started to work in my favor. If you have too few particles, the light is just gonna go straight through it. It's not gonna be dense enough, and it's really not gonna be readable, and the lighting is really going to struggle. So sometimes the answer is simple as bring up your density of the particles. I know it's very computer intensive. Just figure out what number that looks like, and then when you're ready to render, bring it up to that number, render out your animation. So I'll give you an example. In this scene right here, there was three lights. I took my background far back enough to where the area lights that were going to hit the particles weren't hitting my background. And I was able to control the background independently. Then I was able to get a light above it and then a light at the very back hitting the back of it to get it this really nice studio effect where my background had its own control independently to make it look really beautiful. And then two points at the top and the back to make it look really, really nice. Now, of course, sometimes the lighting comes from the particles themselves because the particles are emissive. So in that case, lighting isn't really going to affect it and you can get away with lower densities because things are a little bit easier to read. All right, now let's talk about shading and shaping these particles so they can look really cool. Now, most of the time I'm just using the default spherical points that happen when you just simply add points. Now, one trick I've recently used is separating some of the objects and replacing them with this flat circle that has a really reflective metallic material. That's gonna create these really reflective moments that add just this really nice interest to your animation. So you don't always have to stick with the default spheres. Another really easy way to add some interest in your animation is just simply randomizing the size of the points. Then what you can do is set up a store named attribute, plug that same randomization into the attribute. You can go to the shading, call that attribute and plug that into the shading so that you can also get random color in your animations and they stay put when the particles are moving around, which I think is really important. Now, using that same idea of taking something to geometry nodes, plugging it into a store named attribute, you can actually take the same noise texture that is operating some movements in geometry nodes and you can send that into the shading and use that to texture the points as well. I was actually able to take that idea and plug that texture into some of the brightness of those particles in this animation and I just think it made it look much, much cooler. So there you go. Those are all of my tips and tricks that I dove into this week to make some really cool animations. Again, if you want the step-by-step -step tutorials for those animations, they are available on Patreon right now and this one is uh, totally free so you can check that one out as well. So with that being said, I hope you learned some really cool things and I'll see you in the next one.